Hello, it's Stephanie with Coffee, Paper, Scissors. I am on to the next part of my Hansel and Gretel journal. I don't know that I ever do it the same way twice. Uh, I have taken the book apart. If this is something that you've never done before, you can get the this little golden book edge off using a heat tool and keep your fingers away from it and then you know give yourself a chance to let the glue cool glue cool a little bit or the glue will you know hurt also it takes a minute and um, mine got very messy this time I think they used a whole lot of glue on this one uh, so it was really kind of if you can see it was you know making a mess Anyway, so that comes apart. There are always two staples. So you pull the staples out and then almost always there are two signatures in the book. <clears throat> and then you have the little part of the little golden book that, let me just grab another one real quick, that, you know, it does this. And so the thing that I do to fix that is I take my X-Acto knife and I cut the paper right along the edge of the book board. And then I find chipboard. I have so many different, you know, leftover pieces of chipboard. I find one that is almost the same um, thickness and I just kind of sit it right up next to it and feel it. So like for instance, I take a piece of chipboard and I'll lay it here and I was like, well, is there a ridge there? So then I'll try another one and I try and find one that is almost exactly the same. And then I take my, oh, heavy duty Carl cutting board. And I cut a sliver off that I've, I've lined it up, you know, and I make a little mark with a pencil and I, I cut a sliver off. I pull the paper away and I put glue inside of that channel. So you can see here, hopefully, there's a little white spot that is chipboard that I added. And you see how small that is? I don't know if it's clear or not, but anyway, it's there. And then I, I put lots of glue and then I glue the paper back over it. And then, I usually take more paper, so I always have, oh, I have so many scraps from doing my last journal. Let me just grab some really quick. I'm trying to find one that's about the right size. Yeah. So I take scraps. this first fewer cuts this way and then I'll do about an inch I'd say inch and a quarter I'll do an inch and a quarter And then I glue it over. I try to make it cardstock that I'm gluing um, on top. Uh, regular copy paper, I don't feel is going to give it enough strength. And we're just wanting it so that when the journal is all put together and somebody is flipping through the journal, this isn't going to start bending on them like it did when it was you know, the, just the book itself, if that makes sense. So we put that down, spread out my glue as much as possible. I need to clean my bone folder really, really bad. It's got little dried bits of glue on it from doing this. <laughs> okay, so we'll let that sit and dry for a minute. And, um, People do this in all different ways. This is just 
the way I have found um, it makes it really sturdy and I don't ever feel like it's going to give out on me. Um, it doesn't, you know, while I'm making the journal and I'm not real gentle with it as I'm doing it. So I think it's pretty reliable. And then we're actually going to put paper again on top of this. Sometimes I leave this, and this one's in really good shape. Nobody has written on it. Sometimes I leave it, but I'm not going to leave it this time because I love the paper pack that I found for this so much that I want to use the paper. And so that's what I'm going to do. So the next thing that I have done this time at least, so this is, you know, the beginning, this is the end. And I don't know that that's what will be at the beginning and the end, but I used this to choose a paper out of the paper pack, you know, like the colors go with the colors here. So then I, I again, I just mark my paper. And I don't want it to like overhang, you know what I mean? and keep myself out of that is such a dark spot that I can't tell I think I got it it's actually right on the line of the stem there now the one thing about little golden books is that they're not the right size for like a piece of scrapbook paper I'm going to pick this up and see if I got it on my pencil line. It's close. Um, so the, the books are six and what is that? One, two, three, four, five eighths. <clears throat> and so a folded piece of cardstock is going to stop here. I mean, not cardstock, a folded piece of 12 by 12. And so you have to be creative with, you know, if you're wanting to have a full sheet of paper or whatever and make, you know, ways to extend your pages and things like that. But what I'm doing this time isn't going to fit entirely, but it's okay because when I go to get the book all so you know bound together, this right here is going to be covered with fabric. So, it's fine. So, I went ahead and just cut the two of these in half and we're going to go ahead and attach them. Also, you see this here, how it's giving. When I'm all done with my journal, I go in and I put glue and then I hold them, you know, sometimes I'll pinch something on it so that it like re-glues it back together. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I usually put um, book corners on them also. So we're gonna go ahead and just glue these down. I'm going to use fabric glue and you know it's just so that I don't have all the little glue bumps in there real good and it's okay if it's not perfect because I'm gonna ink it anyway so nobody's gonna know so like there's just the slightest little bit of the edge there I'm just gonna even it out so it's the same on both sides and I can ink around it and it won't be obvious Okay, and then 
the front side. I should have left that laying on its side. So in the last video, I said starting a new journal kind of stresses me out a little bit. And so, yeah, this morning I've been trying to figure out what to do to get started and what pages. And I was going to start making some, you know, coffee dyed. I'm like, wait, I don't even know if I need any, you know, and, and is that going to be wasting time? I mean, it's always, you know, something that you're going to use at some point, but am I going to need what color, what color, you know, because sometimes I'll add a little color to my coffee dye to make it tinted in a, you know, a blue or a whatever. I don't know what I'm going to need. And so it's like, Stephanie, just start taking the book apart and get this started. And I'm actually going back and looking at um, one of my other little golden book journals that I did to um, get inspiration from myself. Isn't that funny? This one is so worn out on the front that it's hanging off just a little bit, but that's okay because like I said, I will probably do a book corner. So that is a start, but I don't think I'm going to leave it so that these are what you see. It'll be something else. And then, oh no, there's my first scrap. The scrap big pile begins. All right, we're, we'll see what we figure out next. All right, so I've been spending the last several hours going through papers and getting a couple of signatures together. So I will show you what I've come up with so far. And this is just a start. I will be adding, you know, so much. I'm not going to just leave a big orange page. So we'll just go through real quick. Um, again, I want this to be kind of dark feeling. And so I'm going to, oh, I hate to say it, but I'm going to be doing a lot of inking. <sighs> so yeah, so I'm going to add a whole lot and then I'll show you what it looks like after inking. So I'm just going to very quickly go through. So you can see where I added paper to, I wanted it to meet the length of the book page. So I added to it. I cut the scrap of paper into six inches and then added paper. These two are exactly the same, so obviously I'm gonna add or take away from or do something to make it so that those aren't hard to turn. And then I'm not gonna leave a blank white. I don't know what I'm going to do exactly, but we'll figure it out. Lots and lots of pages. And then the second signature. like this page. This is again where I cut it into six inches and then added some of the, you know, scrapbook paper to make it the length of the, or the width of the book there. Anyway, I like the way that looks. And I did notice um, that the book does call the lady in the gingerbread house a witch. So we're going to call her witch. And the back is the same as the front. For now. I don't know what we're going to do with it. But we're going to do something. Okay. So that's where I am. I think that I'm going to ink and do some stuff and then show you the difference. 
oh, the inking I have done and the days that have passed. It actually has been quite a few days since the last little bit of this video. Um, I've been feeling a little uninspired, so I'm here now. So I've inked and I just want, and I've added some things. So I just wanted you to see the difference. Um, I know some people don't, don't really ink a lot and sometimes I do ink, sometimes I don't ink. I like the way the inking looks. Um, so I just wanted to show you the difference, you know, from one to the next and how it kind of darkens it. And that's what I was going for. If I were going for a really bright look, of course, then I wouldn't ink them. I took and used sprays on this <clears throat> paper and I did add a few um, fabrics here and there as I was going and some edges. A few here and there. My husband is blowing his nose. I'm so sorry if you hear that. Oh, fuck it there. Some things. I just added a little bit. <clears throat> well, I mean, I added quite a bit because it took me a long time. <laughs> this is a double pocket. So now I think that what I want to do next this is a flip up and then there's a little tuck underneath it. I think that what I want to do next is go ahead and, um, I think I want to go ahead and do the spine and get it all bound together. And then I will do more trims and decorating. This is a little tuck spot under there. So hopefully you guys can see the difference in the pages after having done a whole bunch of inking. I have no idea what I'm going to be putting in all of these pockets I've created. Also need to cut out all of those things I printed off of Etsy, you know, the purchases, the Etsy purchases that I've made. That's a pocket and a pocket. I have lots to do still. there. Okay, so and then the front and back are the same. Continuity is always a good thing. Right, so it's it's pretty thick already and I haven't put anything in it, you know. So I'm thinking I might go ahead and work on the spine. Okay, so I am going to glue together just the inside. I'm not going to do the outside yet because I want hidden threads on this, I believe. So this is what I do and people do it differently. I take my fabric and I do a layer of heat and bond and then I do a layer of tissue paper onto the heat and bond because it gives a really good barrier for your glue not to seep through the fabric. Now, some people say that the glue doesn't seep through the fabric. I'm just doing it for an extra layer. So do it if you want, don't do it if you don't want. It's just what I do. So the first thing is I glue down my, this is going to be a three inch spine, which is pretty big. But um, since it's already really fat just with pages, I figured I haven't used this today and it really doesn't want to come out. I'm figuring it's got just one little lump in there that's preventing it. 
See if I can find a needle really quick. All right, that should do it. really having to squeeze on this. I'm sure you can see <laughs> I'm white knuckling it. <laughs> okay, that's, that's lots of glue. And maybe that's why I have a problem with seepage, but anyway, it, it doesn't go through when, when you do it like that anyway. But as I said, do, do it as you would normally do it if this is something you're, you've done lots of times. And then I just do my best to kind of get it in the center. And wiggle it around real good. You can flip it over and squish. But um, if you'll notice, you know, like Fabri-Tac goes through stuff, right? It's not going through. And that's, that's why I do it that way. Again, do it as you want. Because I've had people tell me after doing videos like this that it doesn't have to be done. That's why I keep on saying that. Um, it's about an inch and a quarter about an inch and a quarter. That's pretty good. I did a pretty good, good job of guessing. Looks about right. And then I glue down my pages. So my um, covers. Now I want it to be like this. This is what I'm going for. So you have to make sure that the front of the book is on this side and the back of the book is on this side so that when you pick it up, it looks like that, front and back. Does that make sense? Okay, so um, I just had somebody send me a message. So I, I was peeking at my iPad and I, this went over just a little bit so you'll see probably some glue seepage, but I'm going to be covering up the seam. So it'll be fine. Now I, it depends on, on how um, thick my book pages are, <laughs> kind of on how much space I give. Let's see. That is about a quarter of an inch right there. And then also, you want to make sure it's straight. Now, let me see where I am in the camera. You can see how my um, these things have little lines. I checked with a ruler and they are straight. So I try, what I try and do is just make sure that when I go and put something down, that I'm lining it up with my, my spine. I mean, my yeah, my spine, but that the pages also touch a straight line. I mean, the cover also touches a straight line on one end and on the other so that when I go to stand it up, I feel like I might want just a little more space. Hopefully that's not too much, but I think it'll be fine. Um, so when I go to put it all together and I, um, they're not off, you know, it's not wonky if you have it lined up on a line. somebody's asking about a pie that I made quite some time ago. So if you like pumpkin pie, try making it with butternut squash instead. And it's delicious. I'm just saying. Actually, it's better. I, I like pumpkin pie just fine. But you know, when you've had something so many times in your life and you're like, eh, I could care less if I ever have another bite of pumpkin pie. That's kind of how I am at this point. Um, so I open it up. Now see where I haven't done any? You see the seepage of the Fabri-Tac? That's where my heat and bond and my um, T3 
tissue paper stopped and the glue is seeping through, it's okay because that's going to be covered. Just this edge, I'm going to cover it with something because it's just a cut edge of fabric. Because um, this is as much fabric as I had widthwise. I wasn't able to tear it and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, so there we have this. That will be plenty of space for um, my pages, which have gotten so long. When your signatures get really, really thick, it makes the pages stick out more. And I could still move them if I need to, I think. Fabri tac takes a second to dry. This one may not dry. move. Make sure they're still lining up on a line. Yeah, from here to here, so that should be good. Sorry about the wiggle. Anyway, so that is that. I am going to sew the signatures in and then I have to figure out what I'm putting on the outside as well. Okay, you guys, we're almost there. I have the signatures sewn in. So there is that. And I have, now I'm gonna cover where I sewed it in. So I made this one. I did the same thing with fabric. I did the heat and bond, and then I covered it with some tissue paper. Then I wanted to sew on these buttons, um, but I wanted to have a little background for them. So I had this piece of fabric. I put that down next and then sewed around the fabric. Then I sewed the buttons on. And then I added this little stuff. I glued it down with Fabri-Tac just along the stem and then I sewed over the stem. I'm sure you can probably see the stitch lines. And then I added some lace. I did Fabri-Tac to attach the lace there. It looks like I got to sew through it some as well. Okay, and so now we are going to glue it down. And this is going to, it really it's gonna take a minute because it has to really dry before I can let go and just say it's attached. So we're gonna start by putting glue here. Make sure you guys are aware visible what I'm doing. So plenty of glue. And let's see, I don't know what I was gonna say. I was gonna say something. Plenty, plenty, plenty of glue. Maybe more than necessary, but you know, it's not gonna come apart. <laughs> Um, and then we're just going to, we're going to lay it down and then kind of go, I've had it kind of laid on there so many times that I don't know if that's the right, I think that this is how I wanted it. Yeah, there we go. Okay. okay got a little bit of glue right there. And then we want it to be where... There's a little hanging over on this end, a little hanging over on this end. It looks like I have it like a little higher there. And then we want it sort of to make sure it's, you know, kind of centered. As best as we can. Does that look okay to you guys? I think it's fine. And then just make sure that, you know, it's really on there.
And then I'll go in and put glue on the edges here, just to make sure like right on the edge and then on the thing itself. Just want to make sure everything's getting glue and then where the fabric is, you know, in the ditch there. I don't know what you call that. And then I just want to get it to where the um, where I can see the tissue paper. And the lace all glued down. Now I'm gonna have to do this on both sides. Cover this for a second. I have so much glue poking out of it that it's not gonna, the wood's not gonna go on well. I really want the fabric from the inside and the fabric from the outside to attach to each other. So um, it's going to be quite a while of me fiddling with it until the glue is really dry, which of course I will not make you sit for. Just know that It'll dry and everything will be nice and attached. It'll all be good. It'll work out in the end. Oh, I covered the back um, where it has all the little, I don't know, is it Looney Tunes images? I can't remember what's on this one. Because I just, I covered it. You would think I would remember because I just saw it. But you know, the traditional little golden book back cover. I didn't want to leave it as that. So I just covered it. Okay had a paper towel. I don't know where it ended up. That's a real mess. Let me see. Trash, I think. Okay. Again, so the, the inside fabric and the outside fabric I want them touching each other, this inside fabric. So that's what I'm gonna be doing for the next little bit. Our cover is done, um, but yeah, I'll just sit here and mess with it to make sure everything's good and attached. So there we go, that's our progress so far. We'll see you soon, bye.